Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Unity of Charlottesville's Sunday morning service. This is our Whitestone ceremony today. We're so glad you're here. And uh, Patricia uh, is is a little bit under the weather today. She's having a little bit of a health challenge. She really wanted to be here, but um, so she's asked if you would just keep her in, in your prayers and hold her in your prayers for a speedy recovery. So Happy New Year to everybody. We hope it's starting off wonderfully for you all. And um, I want to welcome you to Unity of Charlottesville. And uh, just let you know that uh, if you have any technical difficulties this morning, that we have a wonderful team standing by. We have uh, in here in the sanctuary, we have Mark and Aisha and John Salidas. And then in backup, we have Greg Jones and Bob Butts and uh, Ann Barkley. So any questions, email that address there, or you can send uh, something in the chat room uh, and uh, someone will help you out. Also, just a reminder about our etiquette, uh, and that is to keep muted during the service and to only chat uh, during the, the uh, public times, not during the private times of, or the quiet times. So refrain from chatting when you can. And also welcome to all of the folks watching us on our website and also on Facebook. So welcome this morning. So it's our custom to begin with prayer, and um, I invite us to just take a moment and to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Ah, we just breathe in the energy of this new year. And we call it and claim it a new year of hope and faith and promise, good health, a year that ends this pandemic, or at least gets us wildly in control of the pandemic. And a year in which the deepest yearnings of your heart become fulfilled. We send this energy of love and light to each other, to our community, to our virtual community, to our planet, to all living beings for peace for love and for light. We claim it so in the name and after the nature of the indwelling Christ, and so it is. Amen. And please join me in our statement of faith. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. stages are teaching me anything it's everything changes and i can change too used to be when things got crazy i'd get to feeling low but i found out i can't let that phase me honey now i know everything changes and I can change too who expects the unexpected life sneaking up on you and sometimes we all feel disconnected what you gonna do Life 
Life's little stage is teaching me anything is everything changes and I can change too. Yes, everything changes and I can change too. Everything changes and I can change too. Thank you, Blair Jones, our wonderful music director. Well, welcome again to Unity of Charlottesville. Welcome to all the people watching us on Zoom, on Facebook, and on our website. And uh, today is our Whitestone Sunday celebration, our Whitestone ceremony. We're glad you're here this morning. And I uh, want to let you know that, that Unity of Charlottesville welcomes people of all faiths, all religions, all creed, all culture, all gender identity, all sexual orientation. Everyone is welcome here at Unity of Charlottesville. And we're really glad that you're here this morning to bring in this new year with the Whitestone Ceremony. We do have a mission statement, and uh, I'll ask us to join together in saying that. And together, Unity of Charlottesville empowers everyone to express their unique divinity, making a positive difference in the world. Well, I've grown tired of looking at briars now that the roses are gone. I've been in a cave and I'm starting to crave the golden light of dawn. Why huddle by a heart that's cold and dark when the fire's gone completely out? A dip your pail halfway down a well in the middle of a ten year drought. When everything I need Is gonna step up and greet me Just as soon as I take my leave So when my spirit is ready And keen as the edge of a knife I'm gonna cut that cord And start my newest life Well, you know when you got When you're stuck in a rut from listing under your load Don't you hate that squeal when you're spinning your wheels And your tires can't grip the road To get off the shoulder you gotta be bold You gotta jettison some of that weight There's a lot to learn around the next turn Hurry up, don't be late Cause everything you need Is gonna step up and greet you Just as soon as you take your leave so when your spirit is ready and keen as the edge of a knife, it's time to cut that cord and start your newest life. So you pulled the weeds and you sowed the seeds And oh, how the garden grew But now the rain won't fall and you're doubting it all As the fields are turning brown Just pack your plow Move on to fertile ground Well, we're at verse 3 and I can see You're starting to catch my drift Cause I've given you a store of metaphors And I'm down to one last rip To find your way like the sages say You just gotta follow your heart You don't need map quest or a GPS Just jump on your dream and start And everything you need Is gonna step up and greet you Just as soon as you take the so when your spirit is ready and keen as the edge of a knife, it's time to cut that cord and start your newest life. Yes, you can cut that cord and start your newest life. Well, praise the Lord and cut the cord, start your newest life.
Thank you, Blair. And that was Blair's daughter, Lily. So that was wonderful. Thanks for being there. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. And uh, people are just getting on. Happy New Year to you. And welcome to people on Facebook and Zoom and our, our website. Uh, I'm Reverend Don. And Patricia is, uh, Reverend Patricia is the co-minister here. Um, she's having a little bit of a health challenge today. So just asking for prayers and, and wishing she was here. But uh, but she's she's on somewhere listening. So we're glad to have her. So, 2020 is over and done. I'm okay with that. How about you? <laughs> you know, for sure, we're not uh, we're not out of the woods yet with this pandemic and the current surge that we're all experiencing. We don't know when the vaccines will be available to us and to our loved ones, or when we'll be free to return to some sense of normalcy, which includes hugging and being together in person with our family and friends and coming to unity, being with our unity community here. We don't even know if or when the president will finally do the right and decent and honorable thing and make way for a newly and duly elected president. But still, at the new year, it's natural for us to think about fresh starts. It's natural for us to think about starting over. I want to show you a scene about uh, a woman who wanted to start over with her own candle shop. <laughs> uh, you know, when Brooke Shields was in her prison cell, she entertained the idea just for a brief moment that happiness was not something outside of her. But she gave up too quickly, you know, and of course, in unity, this is a foundational premise that life is consciousness. And consciousness is lived from the inside out. As Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within, within you. So we might think to start over or fresh over or start fresh with, with New Year's resolutions. And I, I saw one that looked interesting. It said, I've, I've given up social media for the new year and I'm trying to make friends outside Facebook while applying the same Facebook principles. So every day, I walk down the street and tell passers-by what I've eaten, how I feel, what I did the night before, and what I will do tomorrow. Then I give them pictures of my family, my dog, and me gardening. I also listen to their conversations and tell them I love them. And it works. I already have three people following me, two police officers and a psychiatrist. Well, resolutions imply, I think, that there's something wrong with us. You know, we think of our failings, and then we set goals to fix them. I feel overweight, so I want to lose 10 pounds. I don't like how I feel when I'm complaining, so I don't want to complain so much in 2021. We have a little bit of a different idea in unity, and that is that there's nothing wrong with us, that we, all are, we are already whole and amazing beings born in original blessing, not original sin. And so it might be more useful to understand and to claim the power that is already within us, the power of thoughts, the power of the mind, the power of our intention. And this power originates in the field of divine ideas that the new thought pioneers like the Fillmores and Ernest Holmes referred to as divine mind or God mind. And one of the most effective and efficient ways to center ourselves or commune with the divine energy within us is to heed the words of the 13th century Christian mystic, Meister Eckhart, who said that nothing in all creation is so like God as stillness. Stillness, or silence, as the Fillmores called it, is our connecting link with the divine. And from stillness, we connect to the infinite field of divine ideas, and then we act according to our intention, or in the words of Jesus, according to our faith, it is done unto us. So intention focuses the mind on the positive and on the constructive rather than the negative. And so that means that a resolution might be something like, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year. But an intention or an affirmation would be, I am now at my ideal body weight, I feel healthy, I look fabulous, and it's so easy. And if I'm truly in alignment with that intention, I'll want to exercise to feel better, I'll want to maybe forego that piece of chocolate cake if it doesn't forward my desire to be at my ideal body weight. 
A resolution might be, I'm not going to complain so much this year. But an intention or an affirmation would be, I appreciate all the blessings of my life and behold the good in myself and all I come in contact with. See, if I hold that intention, I don't have any need to complain, do I? So the foundation of new thought, which the Fillmore's and Ernest Holmes refer to as mental science, is that our words and our thoughts have power through which we create our world, we create our reality, we create our experience. And in the first chapter of Genesis in the Bible, this power was called dominion. And dominion was given by God as a gift to humankind. The dictionary defines dominion as control or the exercise of control, supreme authority, power, sovereignty. And in his book, Adam Smashing Power, Charles Fillmore said, let us remember that God is spirit and that all that emanates from God is spiritual, including man and woman. The dominion that God gave to man and woman in the beginning, as recorded in Genesis, is dominion over spiritual ideas. That's where our dominion is over spiritual ideas. And Fillmore said that when we incorporate the ideas of divine mind into our mind and persevere in those ideas, in other words, it takes some work, it takes some willpower, some courage. He says, when we do that, a mighty strength wells up within us. And that mighty strength that wells up within us is the power to manifest. Now there may be times when we don't feel like we're very much in control or when we feel that we don't have very much dominion, like this horrible pandemic, and all of the ways it's impacted our lives and prevented us from doing and living the way we want and all the suffering it's caused all around the world. Of course, we do have dominion about how we are in relationship to the pandemic, how we are in relationship to all of these things that are happening. We may not feel dominion when a loved one or we ourselves face an unexpected health challenge or when we or someone we love gets laid off or when the person we love rejects us or betrays us or when we can't seem to make ends meet or when a loved one dies or when we don't get what we want or when we feel frustrated or even disillusioned about our spiritual progress. And there's certainly a strong case that we humans are drastically misusing the dominion that God gave us over living things. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I saw a report from the London Museum of Natural History. They just added an additional 500 species that are in danger of extinction, 500. And in another piece I read a few days ago, it said that if we don't take action now, by the time my four and five-year-old nephews reach adulthood, it's possible that many of the animals of your and my childhood, animals that they read about in their children's books, like elephants and tigers and giraffes and hippos, may be extinct. Not very good dominion on our part. But at the beginning of a brand new year, we have the opportunity to begin again, to look with fresh eyes, with new optimism, with new faith, with new hope, that things will be better in this coming year. And in reality, really in reality, we have the ability to begin again and start over in every single moment because we have choice in every single moment. A Course in Miracles describes this as the choice between our weakness and the strength of Christ in us. But as we begin this new year, we take notice of our opportunity to reclaim or reaffirm our dominion over our own lives and over the power of our intentions. And you may have noticed that we often forget that we have this wonderful power and authority. The result of our forgetting is that sometimes we may feel like victims, which of course is not the truth. But we do give up or misuse our dominion when we allow ourselves to be diminished in any way, to, to made, made to feel less than, you know? when we put ourselves down or let others put us down, when we mentally abuse ourselves or let others do it to us, when we hold ourselves back from playing full out, when we think small, when we don't live up to our potential that we know we have within us, when we give up on our dreams or when we stop listening to spirit or inner guidance 
within us. And if any of you resonate, or if any of these things resonate with you, hopefully they were released in the burning bowl ceremony last week. Because the good news is that we can, we can change all that. That's the good news, we can change. And that's why each year we do this powerful ritual called the White Stone Ceremony. Now this ritual, this White Stone Ceremony was created by Patricia and my friends and mentors who are also Unity Ministers, David and Gay Lynn Minist uh, Williamson. And the ritual has spread throughout the Unity Movement and also throughout other denominations as well. And it's inspired by what used to be a rather obscure passage in the book of Revelation. It was chapter 2, verse 17. And the verse reads, let anyone who has an ear listen to the Spirit, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. So it's very easy to see how Bible commentators and metaphysicians could have a field day with this passage because it sounds like a secret formula, doesn't it? It sounds like a promise. And I actually think it is. I think it is a secret formula. It says that if you're willing to deeply listen to the Spirit or to God within you, if you're willing to listen, if you're willing to overcome the things of the world, you will receive hidden manna or spiritual nourishment and a white stone with a new name that only you and the God of your understanding will know. Now, what do you think is meant by that? What, what things of the world would you imagine that in overcoming them, you would receive a new and secret name from the God of your understanding? If we were here together, I'd, I'd split us up and, and we'd, we'd have a go at it. You know, in different spiritual traditions and cultures throughout the world, we often see a name change during rites of passage or during initiations, uh, signifying a change of status or a change in consciousness. Uh, examples in our own Bible, Jacob becoming Israel after he wrestled the angel of God, Saul becoming Paul after his road to Damascus experience. Every culture has its own stories about name changes from an initiating or overcoming experience. So it seems to me that this overcoming is an overcoming in consciousness. It's an overcoming of limitation and fear towards a greater sense of truth, a greater awareness of truth, a greater awareness of self, a greater awareness of God or higher power. Emily Cady, one of the great early unity writers and metaphysicians, said that the white stone signifies a clean slate in consciousness, a blank slate. And so in her foundational unity text, Lessons in Truth, she writes that that which God would say to you and do through you is a great secret that no man or woman on the face of the earth knows or will ever know except yourself, as it is revealed to you by the spirit that is in you. Secrets are not told upon the housetop, nor is it possible to pass this, the greatest of secrets, from one to another. God, the center of our being, must himself whisper it to each man and woman living in the very most innermost part of himself or herself. And so the Williamsons created this very special ritual as a reflective and contemplative time of deep listening. And it's appropriate that we do this at the beginning of a new year to celebrate the magic of new beginnings and really to set our intentions for the coming year, to reclaim our dominion for the coming year. And so we ask these questions, and we'll do this in a time of meditation. What is spirit calling you forth to express? What new truth or new way of being is waiting to reveal itself to you? What name or word or idea or symbol will help you to anchor and give direction to your thoughts and your actions for this coming year? Something that is so intimate and so personal that it's known only to you and the God of your being. Something that if sometime during the year you feel out of alignment 
or falling short of your stated intentions, that you can look back and remember the truth of who you really are in your heart of hearts, something that anchors you to that intention. And this is the purpose of the White Stone Ceremony. And it can be a very powerful exercise if you're, if you're willing to let it be. And some of you may be thinking, you know, just like we were writing our letter to God from, from God last week, will spirit really speak to me? And how would I know? How would I know that if it's spirit or if it's my own ego? And my answer to you is, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because the power of ritual, especially done in spiritual community, is that it helps us to create sacred space, even when we're not together in, per in person, right? Because prayer, meditation, being together, that energy has no time or space to it, no boundaries. So we can enter into this experience with an open heart and an open mind with the idea that I do feel that there is something within me that wants to speak to me and nudge me on it, wants to guide me into manifesting more freedom and more fulfillment in my life. And I do want to claim dominion and exercise my power of intention in 2021. So now in, in preparation for our white stone meditation, I want to invite you to have your white stone handy. Um, it should be with you right now. And, uh, you know, we've had these wonderful gift baskets for you all, all season, all holiday season. We hope you've uh, been able to claim yours and, and come and re receive it. But if you don't have a white stone, I want to invite you right now to go out and get a piece of clean white paper, just a blank piece of white paper. That'll symbolize the, a slate of, of clean consciousness, blank consciousness. And also have a pen or a pencil handy because you'll need those for this meditation. But don't write yet. Don't write yet until I, until I invite you to do so. Now, if you have a white stone, it kind of looks like, like this, if you got it from our, our office. You'll notice that these white stones are not very large. You can't write a novel on them. It may be that the name or the word or the symbols that come to you will be surprising. Perhaps their meaning will only become clear sometime during the year or perhaps the meaning will be obvious right away. Because this is an exercise in trusting ourselves. And I invite you to approach it with innocence, without expectation. Trust the first thing that comes to you with, that will have a special meaning for you without needing to censor it or having to analyze it or be self-doubtful about it. Just take the first thing that comes. And allow yourself to feel permission to feel guided as if there really is some part of you that knows that it knows, you know, that we can allow for the possibility that by the grace of God, there is a divine plan for you that is just waiting to be revealed. And so now if you, if you would, please take your, your white stone or your paper and hold it gently in your hands. Make sure that you have a pen or a pencil ready as well. But don't write yet. In fact, don't write anything until you're instructed to do so during the meditation. So we'll have this beautiful song by Blair to lead us into the meditation, and then we will begin our white stone ceremony.
everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here To the present moment So let's begin, if your eyes are not already closed, let's start by closing our eyes and taking a deep breath. And if you're coming in a little bit late, please be sure and have your white stone or a blank piece of white paper with a pen or pencil nearby. But don't write yet until I invite you to do so. And if you're aware of any tension or discomfort in your body, just allow your attention to go there for a moment and just release it, let it go. Twenty twenty is over and behind us. The old has passed away, and it served its purpose every event every circumstance, relationship, opportunity, possibility, every encounter, and yes, even every challenge has blessed us with something to learn and to grow from. For our soul is very much like a landscape of freshly fallen snow. 
And any movement across that snow, whether it's the tiniest of animals or the falling of a leaf or the footsteps of a person has left an imprint. And so without any judgment or self-criticism, we simply recognize that everything in our life has brought us to this place in time, to this moment in time. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. We are told by Master Jesus that we are the light of the world. And we rest in this knowledge that we are and that we were always enough. I invite you to take this in for a moment, that you are enough. That you have everything you need, all the wisdom, all the guidance, all the love, all the courage, all the strength, all the faith, all within you. And what a blessing that you are now free to choose an intention, maybe even a new intention, to make new choices. That you are free to make 2021 the best and most fulfilling year of your life. And so we allow the silence, the stillness, to call us ever deeper to the sacred space within us, to the heart space that is our connecting link with the God of our understanding, the God of our being, by whatever name or concept. And I invite you to imagine right now that this is a new day of freedom. A new day of moving forward and stepping into an even larger, richer, and more meaningful experience of life. And so allow yourself to be open and receptive now to experiencing the deepest place of knowing that you are the radiance of the Christ consciousness, the Buddha nature, the Atman, the divine. And in this silence, you can listen to the still, small voice within you. In the silence, you can hear with new ears of wisdom and of your inner connection with spirit.
there is a divine idea within you that is waiting to birth itself, waiting to reveal new possibilities for your life this year of 2021. And so allow yourself to go even deeper, to relax even more fully. Even if you're experiencing a sea of thoughts and chatter, there is something waiting to emerge. There is something waiting to reveal itself. There is a name or a thought or a word or an idea that is waiting to come forward and into your attention. And so we ask, what is the God of your being wanting to reveal itself to you at the start of this new year as a direction or intention for this coming year? What word or words come to you that free you to become the essence of who and what you are? Is it a name? a title, a quality, a state of being, a dream, a symbol, an aspiration, an intention. Now listen ever so gently without censoring, without questioning, without judging, without paying attention to all of the inner chatter in the silence. And when you're ready with eyes partially open in soft focus, write down what is coming to you on your white stone or on your blank piece of paper. And then after you've written on your white stone or blank piece of paper, gently close your eyes again.
How many people need more time? Just kind of w- w- raise your hand or wiggle your hands. So I want to invite you to hold your white stone or your paper in your hands right now. And let's just give thanks for the guidance that we have received from this time together. May the words inscribed on your stone or your paper have great meaning and great forwarding motion to your on your spiritual journey in 2021. And whether in times of trial or in times of joy, may it remind you and anchor you to the deepest intentions of your heart. And now as you hold your white stone or your paper, let us affirm together, this shall be my bridge into the new year. This shall be my bridge into the new year. Let's say that together. This shall be my bridge into the new year. And for that, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. We claim it so. We claim intention. We claim dominion. And we say, amen and amen. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> so uh, this is a time in our service. If we were all here, we would have our love offering, uh, a time of love offering. And um, if you're watching on Facebook or website, you're invited to do that. Actually, if you're watching anywhere, you're invited to, to do that, to, to give to Unity. You, you can do that in um, four easy ways. We're, we'll get to that slide in a second. There we go. You can text your love offering on your cell phone. You, you can go to our website and click donate, or you can mail a check to, to Unity of Charlottesville. Actually, three ways of giving. I want to let you know that uh, you know Unity, as most of you know, is a tithing church. We tithe 10% of all income received from any source um, out. And uh, for the months of November and December, our tithes, the majority of our tithes have gone to Unity Worldwide Ministries, Unity Worldwide Eastern Region, Silent Unity, Unity World Headquarters, um, the Charlottesville Clergy Collective, the Alliance for Interfaith Ministries, and every month we have been tithing to the Blue Ridge area food banks to give foods to people who are insecure with food. So I just want to let you know that uh, these love offerings are constantly in motion, constantly coming in to support and keep us afloat during this uh, incredibly challenging time. 
but also going out to support our communities, our spiritual communities, and our community at large. So thank you so much for your continuing generosity. And uh, we will be having a, a financial report and meeting for you sometime in either J January or February. So if you would join us in, uh, in our love offering blessing, and I invite us to say that together and together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. There's a rainbow over my shoulder. There's a new world under my feet. And the darker the clouds that surround us, the brighter the rainbow will be. So I call in all my relations. Every heart has a treasure to bring. We can circle the worst of the weather. Take courage together and say, Bless these souls that gather round now, shining through the storm. All the colors of the rainbow, each of us keeping us warm. In my dreams, I've seen our faces. We are singing from. just as we are and we are coming home again setting our spirits free and we are reaching out beyond anything we ever thought that we could be so bless these hearts this vision bless us where we are peace on earth is our decision starting right here beginning right now I'm the rainbow I've wanted to see the circle of peace is complete starting over my shoulder 
There's a new world under my feet. <laughs> Thank you, Blair and Johnny. It's great. Beautiful. Well, we have some opportunities for transformation that we'd like to uh, share with you. Uh, first of all, just to remind you about our Wednesday night midweek faith lift from 6.30 to 7. Uh, everyone is invited to join, and it is on Zoom. And uh, next week, if we could uh, go to that slide and find uh, Joanne DiMaggio somewhere. Here I am. Hello. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Um, you know, I was just thinking this, mar this month marks the 12 year anniversary of when ARE began doing programs with Unity. Wow. Uh, we took last year off and I miss it so much because there's just so many wonderful people that we get to interact with, but we're doing the next best thing and we're gonna do start up again uh, on Zoom. So we're going to do a program based on uh, a year long research project that I did on the afterlife. Um, and I said, I did it to myself again. That's the name of the book and the research project. So the first part of it, we're going to be looking at questions like, what does it feel like to die? What does the afterlife look like? Um, what's your soul's mission? Why did you choose your parents? Um, those kinds of questions. We'll look at what the 25 volunteers in the project had to say about all of that. And then we're gonna go into a guided reverie in which we will actually visit our afterlife session. And you'll be able to, um, to explore that on your own. Uh, and then we'll have some time for questions. So this is a program you will need to register through Unity for. We're doing it a little different uh, this time around. So there was information that's been sent to you about uh, how to register. So I encourage you to do that because I think we're gonna have a really insightful and yet fun experience together. It's next Saturday from one to 3.30. I hope to see you there. Wonderful, and it's it's been great to watch jo Joanne uh, getting more and more national attention for her work and uh, m more and more uh, attention from ARE. So this will be a really great workshop. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, also on Sunday next week, January 10th, uh, you know, we have these wonderful prayer teams here at Unity. We have our Healing Helpers uh, that's uh, facilitated by Kevin Morrison. And then we also have our prayer partners facilitated by Buddy Leffers and Peggy Ruth. And uh, Buddy and Peggy and, and Patricia and I are going to be doing a workshop next Sunday from 1 to 3 on the, uh, Unity's affirmative prayer. So if you have any questions about your prayer life, if you'd just like to refresh and renew your prayer experience, if you'd like to learn more about Unity Prayer, we invite you to attend this workshop from 1 to 3. Uh, so right after the service, we'll have a break between 12 and 1. You can go grab lunch or do whatever you need to do. And then 1 to 3, we'll have this wonderful Zoom workshop. Um, and uh, they'll, they'll, we'll have the links coming in this, this current week. So hope to see you then next, next week. Um, January 31st, we have a special service called Finding Peace. This is uh, sort of in place of our Taze. We, we, we felt it was a little bit difficult uh, virtually to do Taze service. So, but this will be a, a, a meditative and contemplative service with a lot of music and meditation and silence. And that'll be January 31st at the normal time. And we want to let you know about our pastoral care team. We always want to mention this uh, because as this pandemic continues, we know this gets wearing on people, and, and if uh, just want to let you know that we're here for you. So we have these wonderful prayer teams. We have prayer support. Uh, we have you know Patricia and I. We have Mark, our office manager. If you need to talk with someone, if you have a special need, please don't hesitate to email or call us, and we will do whatever we can to serve you during this time. So you don't have to do it alone. We just want you to know that. And finally, uh, our virtual fellowship. Uh, right after the service, if you want to stay on Zoom, uh, we'll have an opportunity for virtual fellowship, which is always a lot of fun. So we hope to see you there. So, uh, Kate, are you here today? I sure am. Hey, Hello, Kate. everybody from the world of youth education. We will honor our children and our families wherever they are now, holding them in our hearts, knowing that they continue to be a part of our congregation. So we will share our children's blessing, if we can have that on the screen. So children, Unitines, YOUers, teachers and parents, you are loved, special and important.
It's so true. We love you. Have a great week. Mwah. So thank you all so much for being here this morning. Um, we're glad to celebrate the new year with you and kick it off this way. And we hope this has been meaningful for you. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we have our peace song and then we have a special surprise. I'm sorry, we have our prayer for protection and then our peace song. No, wait, wait let, me, let me do this again. We have our prayer for protection, then a special surprise, and then our peace song, all right? So please stay on after for our virtual fellowship. It's good to see you all. And let us uh, do our prayer for protection together. And together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And wherever God is, all is well.